Hello and welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going back and sharing with you guys how I organized our kitchen shortly after we finished renovating it. Now organizing has become somewhat of an internet sensation shall we say over the last few years although organizing has always been a thing as with anything when the internet gets involved it's just been amplified and there's now a whole organizing community there's even professional organizers who have created very successful businesses and careers for themselves by organizing other people's stuff in my eyes, they're living the dream. Now I'm sure many of you will have heard of the home edit, whether you follow them over on Instagram or perhaps if like me, you are somewhat obsessed, you've probably already seen both seasons of their show over on Netflix. Now I can't speak for anyone else, but I am obsessed with organizing. And for me personally, it has a really positive impact on my mental health. By having everything in our home organized in a certain way and according to a certain aesthetic that we both find very visually appealing, I just find that very calming, very zen. And yeah, it just has an overall positive effect on my mind. Now, there are, amongst the organising community, many different methods and different tastes when it comes to organising. So, without further ado, I'm going to share how I have organised our kitchen. Right, so first of all, I started off with our new display area around the fridge, which was going to be the home of our dinnerware, glasses and serveware. As we just finished the majority of the renovation, there was still a lot of lingering dust, as there will be, I'm sure, for the coming months. So the first task was to clean inside the cabinets to remove as much of that dust as possible. Now I'd laid out all of the items which needed to go in the cabinets out on the island and I'd kept them in their categories so that I could easily see what I had and although everything had already been washed I just gave it another wipe down before placing it inside the cabinets. For anyone who's ever renovated you will undoubtedly know of the pain in the arse that the never ending dust can be. And then I just started to play around with the placement of each group of items, testing what kind of quantities would fit into each section, how to mix in the black items with the neutral ones, and even things like the height of items on each shelf. It had to look right through my eyes. Now I can't say that there's a specific formula or set of rules or anything like that that I work by, but when it just looks right, I know, it's almost like a green light comes on in my head when it looks just right. So there's a lot of fiddling around at this stage, moving items from one place to another, and then I might take a picture before moving them again so that I can pair what looks better before deciding on the grand and final layout. And then of course, I just get to stand back and admire my organization and merchandising skills. Moving on now to the biggest task, which was all the cupboards and drawers. Simon and I have always been fans of storage containers, and these days there are so many options out there who are literally spoilt for choice. But we personally prefer glass, and these very basic, and I think quite affordable mason jars from Ikea are great, and as we had a few more dry goods that we wanted to move over to glass containers, both for aesthetics and also for preserving the longevity of the food inside, we bought a few more. So my first task was to wash all of the new jars. I did stick as many as I could in the dishwasher, but because they're a bit of an odd size, you can't always fit them all in there. And then I washed the others by hand. Once the jars were all clean and dry, I just had to attach the little rubber seal to the inside of the lid so that it keeps them airtight when closed. Now, along with the new jars, we also bought some wooden storage boxes and wire baskets for using inside the cupboards and keeping categories together. Now, in a similar way to how I do my wardrobe organizing, I clear my workspace first. 
So I moved all the jars and boxes over to the TV area so they were accessible, but also out of the way. And then I cleared anything off the island so that I could start emptying the first cupboard that I was gonna start working on, which is the main and largest food cupboard we have. It's essentially like a pantry. Most of what was in this cupboard needed to stay in there, but I just felt like it could be better organized and certainly look more aesthetically pleasing now that we have this beautiful upcycled kitchen. In order to assess what we had, I started to empty the entire cupboard onto the island. And as I did this, I made sure to group items together in categories. So for example, here I had tea, coffee and agave, which collectively make up the hot drinks category. Now these are all items which I wanted to keep together and by keeping them organized, even when emptying the shelves, it makes things easier when deciding where they're going to go back in the cupboard. Now, once the cupboard was totally empty, it was the perfect time to give the inside a clean because again, we've had a lot of dust over the last few months. Then it was time to start figuring out what was going to go where in the cupboard. And I needed to play around with the storage boxes and baskets to see what items would actually fit inside them. So again, it was just a bit of trial and error here, placing different things inside and seeing how much I could fit and what potentially might need to go into back stock. A lot of storage boxes, containers and baskets often come in various sizes. So we bought a few in each size of these ones in particular so that I had plenty to play around with. I did actually measure these boxes before we bought them so I knew how many I could fit on a shelf, which is definitely something I would advise doing before buying any containers or boxes or jars. Whilst you can always fiddle about with them and come up with a way to make them fit, I just think it's useful to know how many you'd be able to fit on a shelf, especially if you really need to optimize space. Having dead space because a container doesn't quite fit or you can't pull it out can cause issues with your categories. Now these boxes are perfect for us. They have this little handle on the top, which is easy to grab so they can pull out from the shelf so you can see what's inside, which is a much better storage solution for our spreads and preserves. Plus this natural wood fits in very well with our aesthetic and the visual appeal is equally as important to us as the practicality. Now, earlier I mentioned about transferring some more dried goods into glass containers. And one category we wanted to change was the breakfast cereal because we don't eat it every day. And once we open a box, it might be open for a while and then it tends to go stale, even if we use a little clip on the bag inside. Plus, cereal boxes are another one of those packaging things which I just do not find visually appealing. So the clear glass containers were the perfect solution for us. Now here's a bit of cereal maths for anyone who's interested. This is a standard box of rolled oats which fit into one two litre jar and then the rest had to go into a smaller one litre jar which I will discuss and show you later. Now some of you label lovers out there might notice that I'm not using labels. Even the very nice visually appealing minimal matching ones that you can get printed from Etsy. Labeling is one of those things which is visually appealing and also necessary for some people, especially those households who might have someone with certain dietary requirements, for example, gluten free, but we personally don't feel the need for labels. The jars are clear, so it's obvious what's inside and there's only two of us here, so we know what products we buy and after a couple of days, we learned the new layout of the inside of the cupboard, so we knew exactly what was in each wooden box. Now, as you'll see, the shelves were starting to fill up and I moved on to the snacks category. We previously had both sweet and savory snacks all on one shelf, but I ideally wanted to separate the two if possible. So again, just eradicating some more packaging by transferring the popcorn into some more glass mason jars and also making a couple of biscuit jars with the layered biscuits, which I'm pretty sure most of you will have seen on Instagram or potentially the Kardashians. This is quite the trend when it comes 
comes to biscuit storage. It's aesthetically pleasing and yes, it does hurt a little bit when you eat a biscuit. On our top shelf, we had a selection of snack bars, which I wanted to remove from the boxes they came in because again, the packaging is quite bright and it is not very visually appealing in, in my personal opinion. So these actually fit perfectly into these smaller wooden boxes and I could actually fit more flavours and more variations out into these boxes than we had access to previously. And this is where my pre-measuring came in handy because five of these smaller wooden boxes fit perfectly onto that top shelf. We also had some slightly different glass jars which house our nuts, seeds and dried fruit. These are what we call our topping jars because we put these on Greek yogurt or porridge and rolled oats or a chia bowl and we actually buy the contents of these jars, so all the nuts, fruit and seeds from a local-ish zero waste shop, so there's no packaging. So we usually take either the jars with us when we go to fill up every few months, or we take some glass Tupperware tubs and then decant into these jars when we get home. And it's definitely something we would recommend if you have one near you. So these topping jars replace the squash and condiments which were previously on this shelf, and it just made more sense to have these in there with the breakfast items and the snacks. Moving on to the next cupboard, which just housed our root vegetables, but not in a particularly visually appealing way. They were just pretty much slung in there. So after cleaning the inside of the cupboard, I started to play around with some of the wire baskets and see which sizes we might need in there to hold the vegetables. These were a really good solution as they are in fact stackable, so it can make use of that dead space, not that we needed to, but they're also breathable, so the vegetables aren't just sat on a flat surface. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to separate our sweet and savory snacks, but I did run out of available shelves in the large cupboard. So I decided to empty this top cupboard of baking trays and ovenware to make room for savory snacks. This also meant that I could add another wooden box for crackers and flatbreads, and there was some space in there for anything additional in the future. The same goes for the sweet snack shelf. I could add two smaller boxes to separate the dark chocolate and the malt loaf with some room to spare. Now, you've heard me mention backstock a couple of times in this video. Some of you will know what that is and will also have a backstock area or several. And some of you might not have a clue what I'm talking about. Well, this is our backstock cupboard. It's a double cupboard and houses those items which we have multiple of and that don't fit in the aesthetically pleasing cupboards. And as there's only two of us, we don't tend to do a big shop very often. So we do stock up on long life products when we do a big shop so that they last us. And that way, all we need to buy on a weekly basis is fresh produce, which we don't necessarily buy from a supermarket. Now, in terms of organ this cupboard didn't actually need that much, just a little refresher. The next cupboard is a corner cupboard, so inside it has two pull-out shelves, and again, this didn't need much adjusting at all, as it was already relatively organized. I did swap out some noodles, which went to live in the large dry goods cupboard with the pasta and rice, and replaced with the condiments, which were removed from that cupboard. So this cupboard does now make a lot more sense as it has lazy cooking sauces, seasonings and herbs, and now the added condiments, which run along the same kind of lines as everything else. Moving on to what we call the baking cupboard, which is situated at the front or the back of the island, depending on where you're standing. And this is actually where the bar stools go, or they will go once we've bought the new ones. So it does make accessing this cupboard a little bit more of a faff when there are chairs in front of the doors, which is why we use this cupboard for storing these items, because I do not bake on a regular basis at all. So as with the other cupboards, I started by emptying the contents and then giving the insides a clean so that it was free, relatively free of dust. Some of the jars in this cupboard were already labelled from when we were in our previous house, so I'm actually peeling those off to keep with the no label aesthetic, but 
I'm reattaching the labels to the bottom because some of these baking products like corn flour, icing sugar, flour, etc., they look the same. Now essentially in this cupboard, I was just giving it a bit of a refresh by aligning the contents and grouping the equipment together. But I did also add in the spare glass jars that I didn't use and the contents of the cupboard above the microwave, which I replaced with the savory snacks. Once this cupboard was finished, I just felt like it had more order to it and all accessories were grouped together in a way that made sense, especially for a cupboard, which is not often used. We have a small pull-out section next to the sink, which we actually added into the kitchen design when we reconfigured it during the renovation. This is now home to things like dishwasher tablets and cleaning products that we use daily, and all other cleaning products will be going in the new utility when we convert the garage later on this year. Next up is drawers. Starting off with the cutlery drawer, which has a drawer insert inside. And as you can see, our knives didn't exactly fit into the end section. So that's something we wanted to resolve. But otherwise, this drawer was fine. The drawer below, however, was definitely something that gave me nightmares. Since moving in, this became a bit of a junk drawer. It had all sorts in there from baby stuff for our niece, utensils, which is actually what the drawer was supposed to be for, travel cups, bingo pens. Yes, we play bingo. And just a bunch of stuff that actually we didn't use anymore and it needed to be culled. The drawer below that is much larger and we were using this as our Tupperware drawer. Now, very clearly, the first port of call, of course, had to be that junk drawer. So I started by removing everything from the drawer and categorizing it on the worktop before giving the inside a much needed clean. And then I did the same with the cutlery drawer and removed the insert to clean all the nooks and crannies of that before putting it back in and reorganizing the contents. As the knives clearly didn't fit in the end section of the insert, I removed those and replaced them with other kitchen utensils that get equally as much regular use. Now to organize the drawer below. I did buy a knife block and a drawer divider. I couldn't actually find a drawer insert that fit the measurements of our drawer, but actually this insert is great as it's adjustable, so it can be adapted if we needed to change the layout of this drawer for any reason in the future. We have four drawers left and these are all located in the island under the hob. So these are all home to our cooking pots and frying pans. There's even a drawer here just for our, our place pan because it's quite large. But one change we did make was this bottom drawer where we just had some of our recycling tubs for specific items and our food waste tub. We swapped this drawer with the Tupperware drawer, which was over by the sink, as it made more sense both logistically and categorically to have Tupperware here with the other cooking paraphernalia. And finally, we do have two further small cupboards either side of the four drawers in the island, which I actually didn't need to touch aside from giving them a clean inside. And these house our tinned goods. Well, there we go. Thank you very much for joining me today to watch how I organized our kitchen. For those of you who are interested, I have listed all of the boxes and jars and organizational bits and bobs down in the description box below. For anyone who is organizing today, happy organizing and I will see you next time.